For those of you who may not know me, I just wanted to put up this little disclaimer before I started the bulk of my video. My name is Christy and I graduated in May with my Bachelor's of Science in Nuclear Engineering. Currently, I'm doing a Fulbright Fellowship in Switzerland at the Paul Scher Institute. And after I return to America this summer, I will start my Master's in Nuclear Engineering. So I am a nuclear engineer and I will most likely continue to work in the nuclear industry or research arena in some way for the rest of my life. Therefore, I have a vested interest in how what happened in Japan affects the rest of our future with nuclear power. That being said, I would not be studying nuclear engineering if I did not believe that it has a crucial role to play in reducing our carbon emissions. I strongly believe that nuclear power and renewable technology have to work together to replace the fossil fuels that we use right now. I also need to say that I'm not representing any company or organization in this video. I'm only talking for myself. And as a student of nuclear engineering, I am not an expert in any way. That was actually one of the things that kind of made this video late. I was a little bit hesitant to put it up because I know I won't be able to answer all of your questions. Also, at first I was a little bit on the defensive because I saw some different websites saying this is why we shouldn't have nuclear power. And I didn't want to make this video in defensive mode. I wanted to have a conversation with you guys. But I've listened to some NPR shows that presented well-balanced arguments. Um, so now I feel more comfortable talking with you guys and making this video. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake of magnitude 9.0 on the Richter scale struck off the coast of Japan, and then about an hour after that, a tsunami approximately three stories tall hit the coast of Japan. As of March 31st, the death toll from the earthquake and tsunami has risen to more than 11,600 people, and 16,000 people are still missing. We probably won't know the economic cost for several months, but it's important to remember that the great tragedy of this disaster is the loss of human life including two nuclear power plant workers who were killed by the tsunami. Which brings me to my next point. The earthquake affected several different nuclear power plants in the region, and two of them eventually had problems. One of the two, the Fukushima Daiichi plant, had critical problems. Just for a little background, the Daiichi plant had six reactors on site. They were built from 1970 to 1979, and they were all either Generation 1 or Generation 2 technology. Any new plants that would be built today would be Generation 3 plus technology. So that just shows you how old they are. Also, their containment structures were only designed to withstand an earthquake of magnitude 8.0 on the Richter scale. Because the Richter scale is logarithmic, it means that the containment structures withstood an earthquake 10 times stronger than it was designed for. And then after the earthquake, all of the safety systems were working the way that they were designed to work, and the plant was in proper shutdown mode. And then an hour later, the tsunami came and pretty much ruined everything by taking out the backup electricity, which the plant needed to run the cooling system, and since the electricity was gone, the cooling system was gone, and that's where we had problems. It'll probably be several years even before we know exactly the sequence of events of what happened, but basically there was a partial meltdown in a couple of the reactors at the site. And as of yesterday, workers are still trying to plug up places where radiation is leaking out from the plant. Although proper cooling has been restored to the site, so the reactors are no longer in meltdown mode. If you want a more detailed account of what happened, the Nuclear Energy Institute has really good resources, so I will direct you to them. Since the accident at Daiichi, a lot of people around the world have been concerned about radiation. 
I've read that people in California bought up all of the potassium iodides that was available at the stores which was completely not necessary. So the public's general lack of knowledge about basic radiation facts probably did not help the situation and I've heard that some of the news channels have been fear-mongering. The editor of XKCD put together a really good graph showing comparisons between what is coming out of Fukushima and natural everyday sources that we're all exposed to. Every time you eat a banana, some of the potassium in the banana is radioactive. Every time you eat Brazil nuts, you're getting some radiation. And every time you take a cross-country trip, we'll get more radiation than you will from what is coming out of Fukushima. In fact, I think the only people who really need to be worried about radiation exposure are the Fukushima 50, the workers that stayed at the plant to get it under control. Those are the people that I'm worried about. and. Even the Japanese, they'll be fine. They just, I mean, there's no reason to drink the milk since you don't need milk to survive. It's also important to remember that not all radiation is created equal. Some have half-lives of only seconds and some have half-lives of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. Um, even beyond that, you have different forms of radiation like alpha particles versus beta particles versus gamma rays versus all these other sorts of different radiation and each different form of radiation has a different effect on the body. For example, the most prevalent form of radiation coming out of Fukushima is related to iodine radioactive iodine, which has a half-life of about eight days, I believe. And, and so within a month, most of that will be gone. So for everybody who is not in the 20 mile radius around the Daiichi plant, the best thing that you can do to reduce your exposure to radiation is fly less or do less medical tests or other simple things. Now on to the consequences of what happened at Fukushima. Most countries have put their plans for building new nuclear power plants on hold until they review their regulations. And I think Germany actually shut down eight or nine of its old power plants immediately. So this is okay if it is only to really look at the regulations and make them better. Um, but if this pause becomes a long-term situation, then we will be doing more harm than we are good. In this video, I would only like to focus on two of the outcomes of a long-term pause. The first one is that if we put pause on building more nuclear, we will have to shift our dependent to more fossil fuel because renewable energy is not at the point yet where it can provide a base load of electricity. Right, right now it can only provide fluctuating energy and you need like a source that will provide a reliable level of energy throughout the day. This will make it harder to combat climate change because our level of energy use is continuing to rise. Even if we make huge gains in energy efficiency, researchers have shown that higher energy efficiency often leads to people using more electricity. Uh, if we have to rely more on fossil fuels, that will mean that our carbon emissions will continue to rise. My second point is that nuclear energy is actually a lot safer than fossil fuel energy. A study actually came out recently showing this. Example, coal is responsible for five times as many worker deaths than nuclear. It's responsible for 470 times more deaths due to air pollution in the general public. 
and it's responsible for more than a thousand times as many serious illnesses than nuclear. So by shifting our focus more toward fossil fuels, we will actually be making the world a less safe place to be. In conclusion, please don't let fear dominate the conversation when you are talking about the risks associated with nuclear power. If you don't trust anything that the nuclear industry is saying right now, please know that the people I work with at the Paul Shan Institute are really concerned about what happened in Japan. They're thinking hard about what we can do to learn from the situation and trying to understand how we overlook something as simple as a tsunami usually comes with an earthquake when we look at such complex ways for plants to fail every day. I know that nuclear engineers around the world are doing the same thing as the people that I work with. We're doing whatever we can from sending experts to Japan to help out to raising money to help pay for whatever nuclear costs there are to the Fukushima region. I also know that putting this video up on the wild west of YouTube may invite some people who just want to fight to say some mean things but, but I decided to put this video up anyways because I want to have a conversation with you if you need to talk about what happened. I can offer what I know which is not very much and I can also redirect you to people who know more about the subject than I do. There's a thousand times more things to say about what happened than can fit in the space of 10 minutes, but I have to go to work. So I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you later. Bye.